Hello everybody and welcome back to Nervous Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing Red Seas Under Red Skies, a book by Scott Lynch. Book 2 in the Journal and Bastard sequence. Now I ain't gonna lie, I was not a fan of book 1. Book 1 was not the greatest book in the world. I totally understood that people liked it a lot, but I just didn't see the appeal. And so when I went into book 2, I really wanted to like the series as much as I like Patrick Rothfuss's The King Killer Chronicles. Because for whatever reason, these two are paired up in, a, in very often in the lists. Especially in the list of uh, who's going to release the next book last, right? So it's between him, Lynch, and Martin. And because of that, I really wanted to like it because I like the other two books in the trifecta. So I really, really hoped that I would like this one. And uh, since the first book didn't do any good, I went ahead into the second one. When you title a book Red Seas Under Red Skies, there's a lot to live up to. I think that that is by far one of the greatest titles I've ever seen. That, that's a really, really beautiful title. And I think that you know where it's going when you say something like that. You see a pirate story, a really brutal uh, pirate story, especially with the Gentleman Bastards. Like that is supposed to be like a really crazy, fun, interesting, rambunctious pirate story. And it was deeply, deeply surprising to me when I found out that this was not entirely the case. Now, I expected pirate story. That's sort of what the story lives up to. And, I, and I'm sure that not everyone came in expecting a pirate story, but that's what I was really excited for. And what we got was kind of a pirate story, but not really. A story, frankly, without any real plot. If I try to reminisce and think about what that story was actually about, I'll run into a lot of problems. Because at the end of the day, this was not very clearly defined as what the entire story would be. I thought it was a bad book. A very bad book. In fact, I thought it was worse than book one, and uh, I'm gonna tell you why. I see online that this is not an incredibly uh, common thing to do. Most people do kind of enjoy this story. And so I will be talking to you a little bit more about why I would not recommend continuing if this is such a big problem for you. However, I will say in advance, book three, really good, fantastic. So if you can get past book two, then you might wanna read book three, but uh, I wouldn't recommend just skipping it. It's up to you to decide where you wanna go from here. Fundamentally, I think that the problem with the story is it doesn't know what it's doing. It has really very little idea understanding where it's going with the story, like what is the end goal? What are we trying to accomplish? What is the big problem that we're trying to solve? And it kind of all boils down to the one immediate plot that basically comes up roughly in the beginning of the story. Um, we do have a couple of small skirmishes that we do think that is, is, the, is the inciting event, but they end up not being so. And so when we do finally get to the inciting event, like the real inciting event that kind of encaptures the entire story, it is somewhat lame. Um, I know it shouldn't seem lame, but it is kind of lame because when you think about this huge encapsulating story, this story really doesn't have much impact on the plot. Like all it is is like, okay, here's an excuse for us to push the plot in this direction. And so the direction that the plot is pushed isn't interesting and neither is the way that the plot was pushed. So what you end up with is a story uh, with motivations that aren't really that interesting, ending up doing a, a lot of plot that isn't fairly interesting. I think it's a really big problem that the main characters like uh, Locke and John, they really don't feel like they have too much autonomy within this story. You know, maybe that's fine for some people, but to me, when you remove the agency of these characters, I think it really runs into a big problem. When the characters are such a defining part of the story, I think that when you remove their autonomy and you, and you make it so that they're kind of playing by someone else's rules, and not in a way that's very fun, like, oh, you have these limitations, you have to get around it. No, it's not, it's not like that. It's, it's more like, oh, you have to go in this direction. Oh, what do you want to do? No, sorry, you can't do that. You can do something that they have no experience in and doesn't really seem interesting. And they're kind of pushed into a world that is roughly roughly speaking, seafaring. And in the seafaring world, we get a lot less of the seafaring that I expected. Because when we end up actually seafaring, I, I say this because they're not really related to the seafaring very much. We kind of get like a very small plot with a minimal tension and with really weird outlandish places that they need to do to go to and cause different things to happen and different people to talk to. And all of these things just seem so outlandish, so unnecessary when we have such a simple plot that we should be just dealing with. And that's why I think that this book is really not not worth reading, uh, even though if you want to read the third book, you have to read this one. There's kind of no way out of that. But I don't think that it's a very good book on its own, because when you have to deal with a plot that isn't interesting because the motivation is not interesting, the way that they actually do it is not interesting, and every single plot or plot point or, or side plot or anything feels so unrelated, feels so out of the blue compared to what we're normally doing, I think that you run into huge problems. And I think that there's nothing really that could have recovered from that. But other than that, because, well, that is a major part, so don't get me wrong, like that's a huge part, and in my opinion, I would not recommend this book because of that. If you put that aside, there's still a couple things that are actually improved upon compared to the first book. The first being world building. I think that compared to the first book, Red Seas Under Red Skies really ups the world building. It, it is surprising how good it gets. Because when you get like into the thick of things, you, you come into a world that is so well defined. And so you have all these things occurring and they sort of fit, even though they're very outlandish and they're so irrelevant, they all fit into this one world of uh, Locke Lamora's world, whatever that is. It, and it ends up being a very, very strong piece of world building fiction. 
that is something that it's really good at as well as a lot of cultural interesting things where you explore different societies this is really done so much better elsewhere but credit where credit is due and that is a very strong part of the story if anything i was incredibly interested by that every time they kind of flash back or flash forward into like different times where they're dealing with the people doing different cons different simple cons that was much more interesting than this grand con where they have very little interest and very little uh, ability to affect what's happening to them and so putting all these things together um i think that you can see why i wouldn't necessarily recommend this book it is by far much weaker than the first book and way way weaker than the third book a review that will be coming to you soon and uh, if you have already read this book and you want to go see my spoiler filled review you can click in the description and i'll take you right there um that is much more detailed that's so much so much more detail um but I, I do want to put this out for the people that haven't read this book and are thinking about whether or not they want to read it by and large uh, the third book was so much more fun than the second book and frankly um if you want to get there and i do think that it is worth it to read this book to get to the third book um i would go for it a uh, thank you to everybody who liked and commented on the previous book uh, the review of turncoat by dresden uh, files um thank you very much for your support and i uh, will keep going in the future thank you everybody who subscribed to that video too and uh, i'll see you guys later bye